Good morning, folks, and just like that, it's the last day of July. We've got all your top science news for the day, including the Earth and Sun. Let's get started with our star over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours were quiet once again. We've seen the coronal hole in active regions, but top left, as that northern active region heads in further, we see the brightness remaining at the limb. Looks like there's another active region about to crest just behind the ones we've been watching a few days. Coming next to the solar wind, all is calm in the geospace plasma stream at the moment, and the same is true for the conditions geomagnetically. All quiet there. Strongest storm on Earth at the moment, Hurricane Isaias in the islands southeast of Florida. The storm is set to run northwest right at the peninsula, and most of the models now show the track heading up the east coast. Eyes on this one this weekend and into early next week. Let's go to volcanoes where they are discovering that just because a volcano is normally a reliable, small, periodic, basaltic eruption doesn't mean it doesn't hide chemistry below that is explosive, like Mount St. Helens. They say many seemingly safe volcanoes are hiding a scary secret below. And speaking of chemistry, oh boy, when basic science changes, you know it's going to be a fun day for hundreds of equations and assumptions based on it. The belief was that dispersion of molecules and chemical reactions were independent, but that's not the case at all. The chemical reactions send out long-range ripples, increasing Brownian diffusion through the medium to help energize the other chemical reactions. The vibrations of the atoms become more intense during those chemical reactions. Let's get out to space next. While the big story recently on Pluto is the loss of a fifth of its atmosphere in two to three years, any opportunity I do get to come back to its ocean will be taken. Now, seven years after our prediction that an underground ocean on Pluto is a potential place to find life, we are now all but 100% certain that ocean is there. The chemistry above is what allows us to speculate about how such a diverse selection of the periodic table congeals below. Aesthetic shot of the day takes us out a few thousand light years to NGC 2899. We are zooming in on what they call a planetary nebula. In reality, it's the remnants of a nova event. And by the way, both stars survive the outer shell release, a recurrent nova, not a supernova. And it's actually ultra rare we get to see a binary system remaining inside. Most of the time, they see one or none. Now, speaking of stars left after nova events, the NRAO is reporting one left behind in the most famous supernova of all, 1987A. They have literally been waiting 33 years to have the interior dust remnant spread out enough to see inside, and they believe ALMA is now able to resolve the innermost core where the remaining neutron star should be found. Now, true enough, they have not imaged a star, outflows, or anything but the interior blob, but that is indeed the next step where they'd been expecting to find that star. Let's bring it back here to our star, good paper demonstrating the solar cycle influence on baobab trees. Their growth via carbon uptake shows 11 and 22 year cycles matching sunspots and solar magnetism, but also some of the longer periodicities which may or may not be high harmonics of the 11 year cycle. Either way, always good to see another confirmation of the correlations that haven't been allowed into the lexicon until recently. Everything about the sun controlling the weather, climate, individual storms, earthquakes, human health and technology can be found in our textbook, Weatherman's Guide to the Sun. You can get it at spaceweathernews.com slash publications. Now last but not least, they say they have discovered a brand new ocean current in the north. Funny wordplay. They mean to suggest scientists missed it before and it's always been there, but I have to honestly question that. This is one of the most studied parts of the ocean. The work on the nearby currents is such that any new detection must be considered a new feature in our changing world, especially to miss what is not just some trivial flow, but which constitutes the actual majority of cold water delivery to the deep North Atlantic chasm region. No way you miss that in the most studied part of the ocean, and yes, this may be one of the huge changes that occurs as the ice is freed from its polar prison. When this planet is lucky enough to lock the ice at the poles, we get the interglacial warmth, like right now. When they start to share the wealth at lower latitudes, we slip into this. You hopefully recall just five days ago we looked at what must be the 20 or 30th confirmation of that model in the Astrophysical Journal. I hope you got to check out the climate forcing movie yesterday. At the link below this video, it's actually a full playlist. Highly recommend it. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. 
right here, but right now. It's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.